Hey there, everybody. My name is Rick Utsu here with Airgun Web, where we tell you the facts, not fluff, and your home for old school airgun reviews. Today, we're going to take a look at the Umarex Hammer. It's been here in the studio for a while, and it's about time we dive into it. Stay with us. So before we get started, I wanna let you guys know that I wanna say thank you to Umarex USA for sponsoring Airgun Web and these videos. If you guys are looking for the hammer and some other cool air guns and airgun accessories that you can get from Umarex, definitely check them out, www.umarexusa.com. Okay, like I mentioned, we've had this in the studio for a while, we've had it for months, really. Uh, and it's just been one of those projects where we really wanted to be able to take the time to dive into it and kind of tell you guys about it because this, this whole platform is not going to be one video, not going to be two videos. I don't know how many videos it's going to be, but it's definitely going to be more than one. And I know you guys want the old school air gun review and that's coming up. So in the South, we would say we were fixing to get ready. And uh, that's sort of what this video is. This is the fixing to get ready to our old school air gun review. So today we're going to talk about some of the basic features. We are going to take it out to the range and sight in our ATN optic. We're going to talk a little bit about the energy we're getting out of the Nielsen 320 grain slugs. And then we'll talk about sort of what we're going to do next. And I do believe that our next video will be that old school air gun review. And we'll get into all the nitty gritty, you know, details that I know you guys want to know. But today I want to just do an overview you, talk a little bit about the gun, its place in the industry, and I'm going to go out on a bit of a limb here and just say this up front as we're starting this series. When I look at all the big bore air guns on the market, and I've shot a bunch of them, okay, I've shot not, ever, not all of them, but I've shot a lot of them, but as far as the big bore air guns on the market that deliver like the whole, we're looking at the whole package, I really think that the Umarex Hammer is going to be that big bore air gun to beat, and I think by the time we're done this series, you're going to probably see where I'm coming from on that. So first things first, um, the gun is actually very, very light, and the profile is like, like a regular air gun or a regular rifle, okay? There's a lot of big bore air guns out there that are just like forever long. They're just like long. There are some that are bull pups that are longer than this gun, okay? And the reason that is, is that most of the time with big bore air guns, the way they make power is they have a lot of pressure, they have a valve, and they're hitting that valve as hard as they possibly can to get a bunch of air out to go down the barrel and push the, push the slug or whatever they're shooting. The longer the barrel up to a point, the more power you're going to get. So that's why you see these really long barrels, you know. Uh, you take certain guns and shorten the barrel up, and there goes all your power. Okay, so Umarex had a bit of a challenge. They didn't want that, okay. They didn't want a super long, unwieldy, not very... Uh, brush or woods friendly gun. They wanted something that would be more traditionally profiled so that you take it out in the woods and not be hanging it up on absolutely everything, okay? So what they had to do to make that happen, and this is one of the things that really caused some of the delays, they wanted to get this part right along with the safety stuff we'll get to here in a minute. But they wanted to get the, the whole power output and the form factor right. They could have done a lot of power just by making the barrel longer. But that this is really not the direction they wanted to go. So they had to completely redesign this whole part of the gun, which is the valving system, the regulator, the plenum, all of that stuff had to be completely just done from scratch. And that's one of the things that really kind of made it a little bit longer in the development. Now, they did solve all of those problems, okay? Now, out of the gate, just a little spoiler, with those rounds, we're getting about 560 foot-pounds. I've shot some heaviers, like some 420s, that's doing over 600. So you're definitely going to get more power the heavier bullet up to a point, okay? At some point in the series, we'll definitely look at some other ammo options as well. Okay, so let's talk about safety. That was the other thing they really wanted to get right because we're talking about a gun that pushes a ton of power here. And this thing is full of different safety features. So let's take a look at that. Okay, now back here, let me get this sort of right there. Okay, back here we have the main safety bolt. I don't know what to nut, screw, whatever. This in the gun prevents you from cocking the gun. So if that's in there, you can't even cock it. The other thing they have going on here is there a, there's a plate right in here that 
if it's not pushed down, okay, and it's pushed down when you insert the magazine, if that's not pushed down, you can't pull the trigger. So they have these very cool safeties involved. And then of course, we have the standard, you know, trigger safety here. So you've got uh, not only the bolt safety, it means you can't cock it. We have the plate safety, which means you can't pull the trigger if the mag's out of it. We also have your regular, you know, trigger safety here. So that I think is all very, very cool. Aesthetically, the gun is, you know, an AR style platform. It's got a fixed buttstock that's not adjustable. It's got an AR grip. Um, the thing that I think is really cool is it uses standard M-Lock rail. So um, you don't have to go buy something unique. It's just if you got M-Lock accessories, they'll drop right on this gun. You've got a rail up top here. I could mount whatever I wanted here. Uh, I'm running the Excite 4K Pro. I plan to hunt with this, which is some of the other footage we're hoping to do. Uh, and I want to be able to hunt both day and night and capture my footage. And the ATN products do that really, really well. The one thing I want to tell you guys about before we go to the, to the range is one of the things you need to watch out for. So I'm going to demonstrate this uh, with a different product. I'm going to grab another Umarex product here. If you have a revolver, you would never shoot the gun like this. Okay. Uh, one, you couldn't rotate the, the, the cylinder, but if you were able to, and that gun were to fire, you're going to get blowout of the side of that gun. That's going to tear your hand up. You never want to have anything in this part of the gun, right? So that's just common sense. Well, if you look here in the hammer, uh, the magazine, when it goes in here, oh, let me get this bolts out, cock it. Okay, it is on safety, yes. Okay, slide this in. Okay, if you notice, this has got a little bit of a gap. So anytime you're shooting this gun, you don't want anything in this part of the rifle. If you do, you're gonna get bit, you're gonna get bit hard. So I just, when I get to the range, I'm gonna talk about that a lot. I shot that footage the other day, but you're gonna hear me talk about keep stuff away from this. Now, when I'm shooting, especially if I'm shooting on a bipod, I have a tendency of wanting to go like this, to brace the gun here. Yeah, obviously, I'm not gonna wanna do that with the hammer, right? I'm also not gonna wanna put my hand over the scope. Sometimes I'll cup the scope. Anything in this area, you gotta keep yourself away from it. It will bite you. That's really, as far as I'm concerned, the only negative I have found with this gun. Um, I love the trigger. Gosh, it's easy to cycle. It's so easy to cock this and get that next shot out. Accuracy's there. Power is certainly there. Um, but this right here, you got to watch out for that. If you are shooting from the shoulder or you're in a stand and you're shouldering the gun like that, you won't have any problem. If you're at the bench, you got to watch what you're doing because bad habits will get you bit and it is no fun. I have been bit a couple times and you learn right away. I'm not going to do that again. So, well, it took me a couple times. So I, I didn't learn right away, but I learned pretty quickly <laughs> that you don't want to have anything in this area. All right, well, that's gonna wrap it up for in here. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the footage. Now, I shot this the other day. It was a really, really nice day. It was the first time I got, you know, the opportunity to sit down and just shoot this gun for an extended period of time. I got the sight of my scope. I got to shoot these new 320s. It was a lot of fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to that footage. We'll be right back. Okay, so we're here at the bench. I'm gonna see if my new FX chronograph is gonna work on this gun. Um, this thing's got a bit of recoil. I've shot the chronograph um, on another gun that had little to no recoil. So this is kind of a kind of a big test as far as I'm concerned. Will it hold up? See what I want to do? See, this is what you don't ever do with this gun. You're going to have to train yourself if you're on the bench to not do that. If you do that, you're going to get bit. You're going to get bit hard. So, you know, you don't want to do this. You don't want to do this. You want to keep your hand away from this area, okay? I can't stress that enough. All right, so I am running tethered. The reason I'm doing that is because at a 4,500 PSI fill, we get two shots, we'd be filling the gun more than we would be shooting it. Um, and so I'm running tethered um, just so that we can move through this video. We got lots of little flies today, so that's gonna be a pain. All right, first thing we need to do is get ourselves sighted in. Now, I'm running the ATN Optic because I am going to be hunting with this. Um, we have a lot of coyotes around here that are threatening our livestock. And so I'm getting this set up for either day or night hunting. So I've got the ATN 4K. Um, 
I could run the thermal, but that's great for nights, not really as good for day. So I'm gonna set this up for day night. So I've got the ATN 4K Pro. Let's just get some shots under our belt here. So I'm gonna take a shot. Okay, so we are there and we're on fire. Okay, do not grip here. Remember, whatever you do, do not get your hand in the way of that breech. Okay, pull it tight to your shoulder because it does have a punch. 875. Okay, so 875 with a 320 is 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 pretty serious. Um, I don't have the numbers here. I wish it kind of gave me the foot pounds, but we can we can certainly do the math. Okay, to take our next shot, pull back and push forward, and that's it. Um, I think I got it. No, there we go. Got to get that click there. Okay, again, get your hand nowhere near the breech. 877. Okay. So now I'm going to go into my tools and use the one shot zero to get us on target. Okay, let's see here. I wanted to see what we were getting for energy before we start shooting again. 877 energy we are at 546 foot pounds that's where we're at right now okay i've shot heavier bullets like 400 grain and we tipped over 600 so we're getting a little more velocity here energy is still exceptionally good at 546 that is pretty awesome all right let's go ahead and we'll put a couple more rounds in here and I'll record the target through the scope and we'll get these things on target here. 884. Okay, that's just a little low. All right, let's try it again. It's not gonna adjust, I'm just gonna try to take the shot again. 865. Okay, I'm just shooting a little bit low. So left to right's probably good. Man, I, I'm, I'm anticipating the recoil uh, on this because it, it's it's got a lot of recoil. Um, and it the air in your face and the air around that it comes out the side, it takes getting used to. That's why I didn't want to do like a review right up because it's a gun that's probably going to take you getting used to it before you get really accurate with it so um i'm i'm happy with the left to right i need to get the shot up a little bit so i'm going to just just come up with it a little bit 800 there it is all right that's getting more consistent Yep, there we are. Okay, so it has definitely taken me a little time to get used to the recoil. And uh, just, you, you want to anticipate it, you so do. It'll take a little bench time for you to get used to the gun. But now, let's see if I can do a couple more right in that same space. I think we're going to be good to go here. Let's see here. We're right in that center ring. Here we go. 886. Yeah. Yep, yeah, right there. 888. I pulled that a little to the right, but hey, now I'm definitely getting the hang of it. I'm going to try to hit the steel gong and should be able to do that easily at 50. What I'd like to try doing is see where we're hitting at 100. Now, I don't know if you guys will see that on the video, but um, they have different reticles now. And one of them is a first focal plane reticle, which is pretty cool. So you get sort of dialed in um, and now you can actually use the magnification and your mill dots go with you. It's very, very cool. I don't think you see it on the recording um, but nonetheless, let's see, did this, okay, yeah, we were set to go. Okay, so I'm going to shoot that gong. Eight 
186. Okay, so that is a 50 yard shot and that would be a dead whatever was in front of me. Now I'm gonna cock it. I will say um, the first few times you shoot it, it it's a little bit unnerving because there's air and there's recoil. It, you do get used to it. You do settle down a bit. Um, it's gonna take a little bench time. Wow, just low, okay. All right, so my estimate was way off. I do like that first focal plane reticle. Okay, I'm gonna put the mill dot right on the bottom of the target. 800. There it is. Okay, maybe wandering a little left or right or something. Let me see if I can hit it a little bit better. It may be right at that. 91. There's 100 yards. Um, now I've got a little plate out there. And just so you guys know, that is AR 500 steel, so I'm not gonna hurt it with this. It's, it's beastly stuff. Okay, so the little plate out there is like, a, like maybe only a six inch, maybe smaller, I don't remember, it's four or six. Um, but it's way tiny, so let's just see. And probably if I do manage to hit it, it may just, it may knock the stand over. So that we'll call that done. Let's just see. Um, all right, so I'm gonna use right about, not quite there, well, right there. 886. We're gonna call that done <laughs> because, um, yeah, that's what you can do. That was, um, well, there you go. That's not even a mill drop at 100 yards. I'm dead on at 50. We go back over to 50 yards now. Oh, I went right under it. Are you kidding me? I blinked right as I pulled the trigger. That's sad. Okay. That was very sad. I can't believe I did that. Okay. <laughs> All right. There it is. <laughs> All right. So there you go, guys. All right. So let me go ahead and shut this stuff down. We'll go ahead and wrap this review up. What a beast. Okay, everybody. So you are privy to my learning curve with the rifle. This is what I go through when I go to do a review. I gotta spend time with it before I actually film the review. I wanted to kinda let you guys in on some of the, you know, before you guys see the actual old school review, we gotta go through all this. And this gun is unique, you know, not a lot of guns require as much sort of bench time to get used to it. But I'll tell you, this thing's beastly. Um, it, it, it was gonna take some getting used to. I'm excited to bring you guys the full review. Again, that'll be next. And I'm excited to go hunting with it. It does require uh, some discipline, some trigger discipline, some follow through, uh, getting used to the air coming out around it. It doesn't, I mean, it's just different. It, it's gonna take a little getting used to. Also, you know, I'm gonna reiterate this over and over and over. This area is like the red zone. You wanna stay away from here and for me, I, I'm one of the guys who will grip my rifle like this, so I have to be extra diligent not to do that here. I like this whole, I like this whole setup. I really do like the way this chronograph works too because, you know, I'm able to just keep shooting at different targets, get that same, you know, get the feedback uh, without having to move the crony. And that, to me, I think that is very awesome. I will tell you that we topped out at 891. And just think about it. I mean, that is very, very fast. I mean, speed of sound is 1150 or so. You know, if you're accurate at 100 and we saw where, you know, even a disc like this, which is certainly kill zone on a deer or a pig or something, um, you can, I mean, you could probably dial this for 100 and be absolutely effective at 100 yards. Other guns that have accuracy and range, or accuracy at range, excuse me, um, and a lot of power, the muzzle velocity may be in the 700s or the 600s even. So uh, by the time the bullet gets there, or the slug gets there, the game has a chance to jump the shot. 
you know, this is going to get out there very, very fast. We're almost 900 feet per second. So, you know, goodness, that is, so I think we, I looked it up. It was 565 ish or 564 foot pounds. So we are definitely pushing a ton of energy in a package that is, looks like it's just a regular air gun as far as the length. It's not this really long, weird looking thing. The form factor is normal and I can't get over um, that aspect of, I mean, I love that about this gun. So guys, that's kind of some bench time, some technical data on the gun of, you know, some of the safety features and stuff. Stay with us. We are going to get to that old school air gun review. That's going to be next. Then we're going to do some more testing with some different ammo, see what's the most accurate. I mean, we're pretty decent. I can shoot pretty confidently at 50 and with a little more practice I think I can shoot pretty confidently at 100 um, but I want to know what's the best ammo I can run in this gun and we'll see what that is for now uh, I'm very very excited to get you know looking at the next step guys my name is Rick Utzer here with Ergon Web where we tell you the facts not fluff thanks for watching